Welcome to the lab. I'm Science Rob, and on this show, we're answering your carbon capture and sequestration questions with fun science experiments. Today's question comes from Yasser in Kuwait, and he asks, how do you keep CO2 down in the reservoir and keep it from coming back up to the surface? Well, that's a great question, Yasser. Let's imagine we have some CO2. To keep it contained, we need something to hold it, like this balloon, which, in a geological sense, is our reservoir rock. And as you may recall in our last episode, we touched briefly on porosity and permeability and how important those are for a reservoir. Go have a look if you missed that episode. Now, understanding that the rock can actually hold the CO2 is not enough. We must store the CO2 and keep it sequestered down hole forever, which means the reservoir needs a seal. We call this a cap rock. Now with these CCS projects, the CO2 is injected down into the ground and into the reservoir and is sealed by rock that has low permeability and porosity, just like the time I got slimed. Oh. Now, since these projects are thousands of feet below the ground, we can't just tie it off like this balloon. So today, we'll test a few different materials to illustrate what we do to test the rocks and qualify them as good seals or not. One way we do this is with a stress test, thousands of feet below the surface of the Earth. We won't be going quite that far down to test today. Thank you. And so I built this simple device that has a reservoir and a cap of differing materials. And this will simulate what we would do when evaluating the seal above the reservoir. Now I'll pump CO2 into each of these reservoirs and we'll see which of these seals can hold the required pressure. The first seal we're going to test is a sponge. Let's pump some CO2 in there and see what happens. Not good. Why did that happen? The sponge is porous and permeable. And you'll remember that makes it a good reservoir, but it doesn't make it a good seal. The next seal we're going to test is this styrofoam. Now styrofoam makes a very good coffee cup, so we expect this is gonna perform much better than the sponge did. So what happened there? The foam was impermeable to fluid, but it wasn't strong enough to hold the pressure. And so we created a fracture and the seal was lost. The third seal we're going to test is this plastic cover. Let's see if it has the properties we're looking for. Now that's what we're looking for. Something that's both impermeable to fluid and strong enough to hold pressure. Now that makes a great cap rock. Let's go through what we just saw in the lab and what it means for an actual CO2 sequestration project. The first attribute of a good seal is the opposite of a good reservoir. We want low permeability to keep the CO2 from passing through to shallower formations like those containing drinking water. So one of the first things we do to qualify a rock as a top seal is to take samples of the rock to our lab and to measure the permeability. We also make measurements of entry pressure, which means we use special equipment to directly measure the pressure it takes to get CO2 to enter the pores of the rock. We need to take measurements to understand the pressure at which rocks will fracture. We do this by placing rock samples in a load frame and making 3D measurements of rock stiffness in our lab and by running acoustic logs in the well. Ultimately, we perform stress testing in the well itself by isolating a one meter interval of the formation and pressuring up on that interval until we create a small fracture. Together, these measurements define a mechanical earth model 
which is used to predict when the formation will fail and to determine the project safe working limit. A higher safe working limit means that the project will not only be able to ultimately store more CO2, but it also means that they will be able to sustain a higher injection rate per well. Thank you for watching this episode of Science Rob. I hope to have sparked your curiosity and eagerness to learn more about carbon sequestration. Stay tuned for more, where I'll answer your questions with a fun science experiment. See you in the next one.